الحمد للہ نحم و نستعین و نستغفر و نمن به و نتوکل علیہ و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئات اعمالنا من یہدہ اللہ فلا مضل لا و من یدلله فلا هادی لا و نشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک لا و نشہد ان محمد عبده و رسوله اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وجاہدو فی اللہ حق جہاد هو اجتباکم و ما جعل علیکم فی الدین من حرج ملت ابیکم ابراہیم هو سماکم المسلمین من قبل و فی هذا لیکون الرسول شہیدا علیکم و تکونو شہداء على الناس فَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِاللَّهِ هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ فَنِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّصِيرِ صدق اللہ العظیم My respected brothers and sisters, one of the 19th century famous scientist, chemist, intellectual historian, John William Draper. In his famous books, The History of Conflict Between Religion and Science, he observes that Islam was the first and southern reformation of Christianity. And Prophet Muhammad wasallam was far modern before the 18th and 19th century modernity. It was Islam which gave the word this whole concept of religious tolerance, religious freedom, freedom of expression, freedom of conscience, and actually brought faith and reason together. All of us, we are accustomed to hear that modern science, philosophy, or what we call the liberties and freedoms were given to the humanity after the 17th or 18th century enlightenment. But he says, look at the time when the Prophet ﷺ came, the Roman Empire, the Christendom was Trinitarian. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son, just like the Trinity in the heavens, there were three kinds of realms of state, three kinds of groups among the human beings, the royals, the nobles, the clergy, and then the commoners. Even when it comes to science, it was more theology and less observation. That's where human beings, they had three kinds of fluid, the source of one fluid was brain, and the other was heart, and the third was liver. So he says that the Quran brought its rival Unitarian worldview. Kul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. Laysa ka mithlihi shay, wa huwa samiyul basir. There is no division of person within Godhead. He is the sole master and creator of everything in this existence. Ya ayuhal nasu inna khalaknakum min zakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'illa li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi yatqakum inna Allahi alimun khabir. That was the original Quranic message. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَكَكُمْ مِن نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا وَخَلَكَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا He created all human beings from single father and single mother. 
So there was no superiority of the royals or the nobles or the clergy and bishop and priests over common people. Actually, from the very beginning of the Quranic message in Makkah, even before the Salah and Zakat was made obligatory, the Prophet ﷺ stood forward for the downtrodden like Bilal, like Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and when he was unable to support Yasir and Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he stood by them, Sabran ya ala Yasir, inna ma'idakumul jannah. It was Islam which came, la ikraha fi deen, there is no compulsion in the matter of religion. فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيُؤْمِمْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيَكْفُرْ If somebody wants to be a Jew, Christian, anybody, because there is no compulsion in the matters of religion. It was Islam in the city of Medina, through the Medina constitution, which allowed non-Muslims to have equal citizenship in the state of Medina. So Islam was far more modern and enlightened in the 7th century than what the West got in the 18th century. And here I want to quote also one of the famous English scientist, philosopher, historian, and social anthropologist, Ernest Geller. He says, if you look at the medieval time, you will find that there were four civilizations very dominant during the medieval centuries. The Judeo-Christian, the Indian, the Chinese, and the Muslim. And he says three of those civilizations are bulldozed by their own believers. If Moses, peace be upon him, according to him, has to wake up and go to any synagogue, he would not be able to recognize that this is his religion. Because the language has changed, the scripture has changed, and even the ibadah has changed. And if Jesus, peace be upon him, is to wake up today and go to many of the churches, he will not be able to recognize because in the black churches, the picture is going to be black, in the white, it's going to be what? White. Into the Chinese. So it will not be easy for him to recognize that this is his religion. But if Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to wake up today and go to any masjid from Tambaktu to Fiji, he would enter and he would hear the same adhan, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. When the time would come for Salah, he would listen to the same Al-Fatiha with which he started his Salah. Five daily prayers, Muslims are reciting the same Quran. During the month of Ramadan, they are reciting the same Quran. Millions of individuals who do not understand Arabic language are memorizing the Quran. So, so much historical authenticity, historicity, and so much relevance no other civilization has got, as is the situation with the Islamic civilization. My brothers and sisters, some of the other scholars, Western, Orientalists, who have studied Hadith or the Seerah of Rasulullah they have concluded that there is not a single historical figure who is so much loved, so much respected, so much imitated, and so much profoundly venerated, like the person of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The impact of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the 21st century is as significant and profound as the early centuries of Islam. So alhamdulillah, my respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with what we call the most universal religion, the religion which takes care of our spiritual realms, our secular realms, its 
a sort of such a profound world view tibiyan alle kulli shay there is solution for everything if we just go back to the original teachings of the quran and the model of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam here i really want to share some concerns with you my brothers and sisters alhamdulillah we muslims we love the quran we love our habib ali salatu wassalam but i am also concerned a little bit about the way we are approaching our religion just take the example the quranic tawhidi paradigm or framework is more focused upon what we call the human aspects of this deen that's where in makka the prophet ali salatu wassalam and the quran is more focused upon human equality proper distribution of resources authority even when it comes to what freedoms doesn't matter a christian or a jew anybody as long as that person is part of that civic mosaic he or she can be part of or equal citizen of the state of medina my brothers and sisters i am seeing and i am masha allah active in the muslim community of north america let's say for the last 35 years and i'm seeing that our focus has become too much personal too much ritualistic too much legal framework we are not coming to the service area to the issue of love and mercy and being beneficial to other people and when i hear rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying khairun nas may yanfa'un nas the best of the human beings is the one who is more beneficial to humanity fa amma zabadu fa yadhhabu jufaa wa amma ma yanfa'un nas fa yamkuthu fil ard this is the quranic dictum universal principle of the quran that something which is useful to humanity allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it flourish but the scum of the ocean are wasted my brothers and sisters this is where i truly believe that we need to focus more upon the universals of tawhid it is not sufficient for us to just say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah we need to bring that human equality into our what societies unfortunately sometimes i do not see that kind of dignity respect and equality in the muslim world and here you and me are witness maybe in the west sometime maybe in america i could claim that equality or dignity perhaps more than my own home country and i'm seeing that the prophet ali salatu wassalam was worried about these aspects even when he was departing this world and seeing of his sahaba in hajjat al wida what was the focus of his message ayyuhan nas inna abakum wahid o human beings your father is one la fadla li arabiyyin ala ajami wa la ajamiyyin ala arabi illa bi taqwa there is no superiority of the arab over the non arab the black over the white the brown you come from one father and he is from turab he was from dust all of these egos nationalism ethnicities turf arrogance sometimes we forget that this whole issue of arrogance was the beginning of shaitaniya in this existence when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created adam alayhi salatu wassalam what was the problem iblis had at the time ana khairum minhu khalaqtani min nar wa khalaqtahu min teen i am better than him my origin is from fire i am higher he is from dust that was the beginning of all evil in this existence and that evil is present among us nationalism ethnicity this arrogance such and such state such and such ethnicity such and such nationalism my respected brothers and sisters we need to go back 
to the Tawhidi paradigm. And remember, the Prophet ﷺ left us with this magic message. Inna amwalakum. Actually, the Prophet ﷺ, while giving the last message, he was very particular about this message. That your lives, your properties, and in some of the riwayat, wa a'radakum. Haramun alaykum ka hurmati yomikum hada, fi baladikum hada, fi shaharikum hada. Your life, your property, and in some of the riwayat, your honor and dignity is as sacred as the sanctity of Kaaba, the inviolability of Arafah, and the month of or the sanctity or the sacredness of the month of Zil Hajjah. So my respected brothers and sisters, it is important for us that we go back to the universals of Islamic concept of Uluhiya, La ilaha illallah. We focus upon human equality, human justice, human rights. We need to bring the shift from what we call the metaphysical celestial realms to what we call anthropomorphic shift. We need to bring our focus upon man, upon the well-being of everybody in this existence, and we need to start serving our own brothers and sisters, and not only our own brothers and sisters, but our brothers and sisters in humanity. So my request is, I'm seeing in my community that out of our Muslim community of five, six, eight million, million people there in America, only 20% are the ones who are attending Eid Salah. Far lesser than them who come to regular Jummahs, and maybe, I'm not sure exactly, maybe two or three percent are regular Musallis. And even when it comes to the Eid Salah or the Juma goers, I see mostly the refugees, the first generation attending Masjid more, but the second and the third generation, I don't see them very often in the Juma or five daily prayers. And I also see that these young people are very active when it comes to serving, mashallah, food or soup kitchens, mashallah, or going and taking care of these kind of humanitarian aspects, and they may not be part and parcel of the other discussions. So my request is that we need to worry about our future generations. We need to merge our ritualistic and legalistic framework along with the humanitarian aspect, add more service, add more sense of what justice and the issues of economic and social justice, and we need to become the heralds of our mission rather than worrying about our turf or about our egos and about making, mashallah, more and more money and getting to the helms of affair. My brothers and sisters, the ayah which I recited before you, the ayah of Surah Al-Hajj, last ayah of Surah Al-Hajj, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the surah is Surah Al-Hajj, but the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the surah, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ And struggle in the way of Allah as is appropriate for that struggle. تَبَاكُمْ He has chosen you for this struggle. وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ And the type of religion and faith he has given you, he has not caused you any illogical, irrational, or any of those problems with some of the other faith traditions have got. وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمِ He made you among the millah of your father Ibrahim, which means this is not something which began with Rasulullah Sallam. This is something which has been tested over centuries. You have got historical continuity. هُوَ سَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَفِي هَذَا it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as some of the scholars said, that who called you Muslim, or some of the others say, Al-Dhamir Aid ila Ibrahim, that the Dhamir, 
goes to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, the first one who called you Muslim is Ibrahim. Who was ammaakum al muslimina min qablu wa fi hadha? Li yakoon al-rasool shaheedan alaykum wa takoonu shuhada ala al-nas. So that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam be a witness upon you and you be a witness for mankind. So our role is not to make money and to have these assets. Our role is to share that mission, that message which Rasulullah Sallallahu left us when he was about to depart. You remember last question he asked from Sahaba Radhuanullah Ali Majmain, Allah inni hal balakht, did I convey you the message? And everybody said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes, you conveyed. And he looked towards the heavens and said, Allahumma fashad, Allahumma fashad, Allahumma fashad. Ya Allah, be my witness, I conveyed it to them. And then he said, فَلْيُبَلِّغُ الشَّاهِدْ مِنْكُمُ الْغَائِبِ Now I am leaving, and this responsibility is on your shoulders. My respected brothers and sisters, after living 50 and 60 years, I really want to remind you, Somehow, alhamdulillah, we have built masajid, we have built organizations. But when it comes to da'wah ilallah, outreach to the local people, I do not see we have focused a lot on it. The number of people, the local people who have accepted or who have been assimilated or those who are given the power and the authority or the empowerment to take the word, Somehow, I see we are missing the boat on it. So my request is, take that responsibility seriously. Go to the universals of Tawhidi paradigm and go to the humanitarian aspect of our deen. Serve, love, show mercy and be beneficial to humanity. Allah will make you flourish and Allah will make your message flourish. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to understand the priorities of our deen and may he give us the true sense of tawheed and the true sense of our masuliya and our mission and our message. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li shahri al-muslimin wa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru al-rahim. Alhamdulillahi na'maduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله والتنزر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لا رأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقدام علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة الله مغفرة للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة مباتنا الله الله في أصحابي الله الله في أصحابي الله الله في أصحابي نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يتقبل منا ويجعلنا نحب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وصحابته وأهل بيته ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يتقبل منا دعواتنا 
اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنا اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم واخزل من خزل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا معهم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاه